So, in our last module, we have discussed uh, different applications uh, in the uh, field of uh, large sample statistics. Uh, and we have discussed that uh, large sample inference or large sample statistical procedures and uh, real analysis and probability theory are just counterparts. So, we can find applications of real analysis and probability theory in large sample theory. So, before we go to the details of large sample theory, uh, we must uh, give some preliminary ideas of mathematical analysis which will be required for fruitful development. So, in this module, we shall discuss some preliminary mathematical concepts. Uh, basically, we shall discuss uh, sequence and their convergences and uh, their application in large sample. So, uh, in this module, we shall discuss uh, concepts of convergence of numerical series, uh, give some examples and uh, enumerate their application in the field of statistics. So, it is already discussed that large sample inference is attached with the performance evaluation when sample size becomes large. Naturally, large sample methods require the concepts of mathematical and stochastic convergence. Thus, study of asymptotic properties in statistics depends heavily on results and concepts from real analysis and calculus. So, we start with a review of the basic mathematical tools starting from sequence and series. So, we start with sequence of real numbers. A sequence is a function from n, the set of natural numbers uh, or the set of positive integers to the real line r. Thus, a sequence is a set of real numbers given by a n, where n is greater than or equal to 1 such that we get a value of n in the real line. Thus, for every n belonging to capital N, we get uh, a value of a n or the value of sequence belonging to the real line. Naturally, the domain in this case is countable and the range is the whole real line. A sequence is thought to be generated sequentially for increasing values of n. As an example, one can thought of uh, 1 by n square or sin n or n or minus 1 to the power n. So, consider uh, 1 by n square. Then we have the values a1 equal to 1, a2 equal to 1 by 4, a3 equal to 1 by 8 and so on. Thus, we find that the value of a n decreases with n. As another example, if we consider n we find that the value increases with n. However, for uh, minus 1 to the power n, we get the sequence, uh, we get that the sequence is either plus 1 or minus 1. That is, the sequence oscillates between minus 1 and plus 1. Thus, we find that sequences may be increasing or decreasing or bounded. So, here is a plot of increasing and decreasing sequences. Uh, so, for example, we have taken square root of n as a sequence and uh, we find, uh, we calculate the value of a n for different values of n and quite naturally we get uh, the curve as uh, that of a increasing curve uh, and in addition, we have also taken another sequence which is uh, twice plus e to the power minus n. Naturally, this sequence uh, decreases uh, starting from uh, a value which is higher than 2, then approaches a value 2 uh, or in particular it decreases to a value 2 for large n. Uh, now, uh, one can see the picture of an oscillating sequence. Uh, for example, we have in the first plot we have considered sin n and we find that uh, we, we get series of values which are between minus 1 and plus 1, but no specific pattern is observed for the sequence. As another example, we have considered minus 1 to the power n, which oscillates between minus 1 and plus 1, but they are neither increasing nor decreasing. So, uh, this leads to the concept of monotonic sequences. Suppose, n is a given sequence, then it is monotonically increasing if a n plus 1, 
greater than or equal to a n for every possible value of n. Similarly, a sequence is monotonically decreasing if a n plus 1 less than or equal to a n for every n. In either case, the sequence is called monotonic. That is, uh, by a monotonic sequence, we mean either an increasing sequence or a decreasing sequence. Uh, it is easy to observe that n square root of n, a to the power n or n square are examples of increasing sequences, whereas 1 by n square, 1 by square root of n plus 1, e to the power minus n are the examples of decreasing sequences. Uh, next, we introduce the concept of uh, bounded sequences. A sequence a n is said to be bounded if there exists constants k1 and k2 such that k1 less than or equal to a n less than or equal to k2 uh, for every possible value of n where uh, it should be mentioned that k1 and k2 are independent of n. Since k1 less than or equal to a n less than or equal to k2 implies minus of modulus of k1 uh, minus modulus of k2 less than or equal to a n less than or equal to modulus of k1 plus modulus of k2, we get that modulus of a n less than or equal to k for some k whenever k1 less than or equal to a n less than or equal to k2 is satisfied. Thus, uh, boundedness of a sequence implies that modulus of a n less than or equal to k for some k. That is, uh, boundedness implies uniform bound. For example, uh, we have minus 1 to the power n and sin n and it is quite uh, obvious uh, from the from our foregoing discussion that minus 1 to the power n is bounded between minus 1 and plus 1 and the same can be said about sin n which is also bounded between minus 1 and plus 1. Next, we introduce the concept of subsequence. Suppose a n is a sequence of uh, real numbers and k n is an increasing sequence of positive integers. That is k n plus 1 greater than or equal to k n for all n. Then the new sequence a k n is called a subsequence of a n. Uh, for example, consider a sequence a n equal to 1 by n and consider k n equal to twice n. Then the corresponding subsequence uh, is uh, denoted by 1 by twice n, n greater than or equal to 1. Uh, now, if we consider another sequence minus 1 to the power n and take k n as twice n, then the corresponding subsequence is a constant sequence containing only 1. In a similar way, if we take k n as twice n plus 1, in this case, we get another constant sequence which contains only minus 1. Next, uh, we shall introduce the concept of uh, convergence of a sequence. Uh, just uh, before going to the formal definition, let us consider some illustrative examples. Consider two sequences 1 by n square and sin n by n. The plot in the next page gives the behavior of these sequences separately as we increase n. Now consider the first plot. Uh, we find that uh, 1 by n square, uh, since 1 by n square is a decreasing sequence, it decreases. Uh, and uh, decreases up to 0. And in case of sin n by n, we find that initially it oscillates and then becomes stable for large n. So, we observe that uh, each of the curve decreases with increase in n. Finally, after a large value of n, the curve of 1 by n square becomes very close to the 0 mark. However, for the second sequence, the curve wastes first few n to become stable. But as earlier, the curve maintains a little distance with the 0 value for large n. Thus, in each case, the value of the sequence becomes very close to a postulated value 0. Uh, in fact, uh, this uh, 0 is postulated for the given examples, it uh, might not be possible that uh, for other sequences we get the postulated value as 0. Uh, so, uh, in each case the value of the sequence becomes very close to a postulated value as we exceed a large value of n. This gives the basis to define the convergence of a sequence. 
So, now we shall give the formal definition of a convergent sequence. A sequence A n is said to be convergent if there exists a real constant A such that for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists a positive integer nu. Obviously, this nu is a function of uh, epsilon for which the distance between A n and A is less than epsilon. That is mathematically absolute value of A n minus A is less than epsilon uh, and this is has to be satisfied for every n greater than equal to nu. If such an uh, A the real constant exists we write limit of A n as A and define A as a limit of the sequence. So, convergence of a sequence has uh, two components number one a postulated value or postulated real constant A and then finding a positive integer nu for every possible choice of positive epsilon. So, let us explain the notion of convergence through some illustrations. Consider example 1, uh, where we have considered the sequence 1 plus e to the power minus n. Uh, naturally, uh, this is a decreasing sequence and uh, by inspection we find that as we increase n e to the power minus n decreases up to 0. So, we just identify the real constant A as 1. Thus, if a feasible new epsilon exists for every epsilon greater than 0, then we can say that limit of n equal to 1. For epsilon greater than equal to 1, we note that the distance between a n and 1 uh, less than epsilon is satisfied for every n greater than equal to 1, because e to the power minus n uh, is a quantity which is less than equal to 1. So, if we take some epsilon exceeding 1, uh, this inequality is always satisfied. However, if 0 less than epsilon less than 1, then uh, absolute value of the sequence, the absolute value of the 1 plus e to the power minus n minus 1 less than epsilon gives n greater than equal to box of minus log epsilon plus 1. Now, note that this box means uh, the greatest integer contained in minus log epsilon. Uh, and it is interesting to note that since epsilon belongs to 0 and 1, uh, this minus of log epsilon is actually positive. So, we get a positive integer nu epsilon uh, which is uh, uh, minus of uh, which is the uh, box of minus log epsilon plus 1 in this case and therefore, since uh, for every epsilon greater than 0 we get a feasible choice we find that limit of n exists and is equal to 1. Consider the second example uh, where the sequence is 1 by n which is again a decreasing sequence and uh, by inspection we identify a as 0. Thus, if a feasible new epsilon exists for every epsilon greater than 0, then limit of a n equal to 0. Uh, if epsilon greater than equal to 1, uh, we find that uh, absolute value of 1 by n minus 0 less than equal to epsilon is satisfied for every n greater than equal to 1 as earlier because 1 by n is always less than equal to 1. However, for 0 less than epsilon less than 1, uh, the same inequality gives n greater than equal to box of 1 by epsilon plus 1. Thus, uh, we can set our new epsilon as box of 1 by epsilon plus 1. Since, for every epsilon greater than 0, we get a feasible choice, a limit of n exists and equal to 0. Consider our third example, uh, which is uh, uh, defined as square root of n plus 1 minus square root of n. Uh, simply rationalizing we get a n as 1 by square root of n plus square root of n plus 1 and uh, it is easy to observe that this a n is nothing but a decreasing sequence. Uh, thus by inspection we identify a as 0. Now, 1 by square root of n plus square root of n plus 1 is less than 1 by square root of n and hence absolute value of n minus 0 less than epsilon will be satisfied if uh, absolute value of 1 by square root of n minus 0 less than epsilon is satisfied. 
Now, the last inequality that is absolute value of 1 by square root of n minus 0 less than epsilon gives n greater than equal to 1 by epsilon square uh, box of 1 by epsilon square plus 1. Uh, the last inequality gives n greater than equal to 1 by epsilon box of 1 by epsilon square plus 1 whenever epsilon less than 1 and for epsilon greater than equal to 1 the inequality is satisfied for every n greater than equal to 1. Thus, we can set our new epsilon as a box of 1 by epsilon square plus 1. Uh, again for every possible choice of epsilon positive epsilon we get a feasible choice and therefore, limit of n equal to 0. Next, we shall introduce the concept of a divergent sequence. Uh, from the analogy, if a sequence is not convergent, it is divergent. So, let us consider some examples. Consider two sequences n square and minus of log n. Uh, we have plotted these sequences against different values of n uh, and they are given in the next page. First, consider the behavior of the sequence n square we find that as we increase n, the n square becomes larger and larger and we get an increasing function. And however, uh, for minus of log n, we observe that this minus of log n is a decreasing function and decreases to very, uh, decreases to very large quantity uh, in magnitude as we increase n. So, we find that a n equal to n square increases enormously whereas, a n equal to minus of log n decreases as we increase n. Naturally, we can observe any finite number to which a n converges. Uh, naturally, we cannot observe any finite number to which a n converges. In fact, after a large value of n, a n becomes infinitely large or small. This gives the idea of the converse of the convergence that is a divergence. A sequence a n diverges to plus infinity if for any capital M a positive quantity there exists a new which is a function of capital M such that a n greater than M for all n greater than equal to new M is satisfied. On the other hand a n diverges to minus infinity if minus a n the new sequence diverges to plus infinity. So, a sequence either can diverge to plus infinity or can diverge to minus infinity and we shall uh, discuss only divergence to plus infinity because uh, divergence to minus infinity is just a, a simple task uh, using the uh, definition of uh, divergence to plus infinity. So, let us consider some examples. Consider uh, our first example where the sequence is a n equal to n square, then a n greater than m implies n greater than equal to box of square root of m plus 1. Thus, setting mu m as box of square root of m plus 1, we get that n square diverges to plus infinity. Uh, note that minus 1 to the power n is also an example of a convergent. Uh, is also an example of a divergent sequence as it does not converge to a fixed value but oscillates between minus 1 and plus 1. Uh, however, there is a controversy of uh, defining an uh, an of defining an oscillatory sequence as uh, divergent, but uh, we, we are just classifying sequences as either convergent or divergent. So, if a sequence has a finite limit, we say that the sequence is convergent and if the sequence does not have any finite limit, we say that uh, the sequence is divergent. So, let us uh, discuss a few results, uh, a, uh, a few results uh, regarding a convergence of uh, sequences. Uh, first one is a convergent sequence is always bounded, second one is a limit of a convergent sequence is unique. A sequence is convergent if and only if every subsequence from it is convergent. A monotone sequence is convergent if and only if it is bounded. This is the well known monotone convergence theorem of sequence and there are some other relations like if 
a sequence uh, exceeds b some constant for every n then if limit exists then the limit of n must also increase exceed this b and uh, next we have uh, celebrated starling's approximation to n factorial which states that uh, n factorial can be approximated by square root of twice pi multiplied by e to the power minus n uh, whole thing multiplied by n to the power n plus half and lastly we have exponential approximation which states that limit of 1 plus c by n whole to the power n equal to e to the power c for fixed c uh, belonging to real life. So let us uh, give some applications in large sample theory. Uh, in example 1 uh, suppose x has a Poisson distribution with mean 5 and we are interested in probability x equal to n for a large n. Observe that for n greater than 5, 5 to the power n by n factorial is less than 5 to the power 5 by, fact, by uh, 5 factorial or uh, in some sense uh, for n greater than 5 we find that 5 to the power n by n factorial is bounded uh, by some sequence uh, which has limit 0. Uh, therefore, uh, limit of 5 to the power n by n factorial equal to 0 and hence we get that limit of probability x equal to n equal to 0. Thus, for large n the probability is negligibly small. Let us compute probability x equal to n for different values of n. Uh, for example, if we take n equal to 20, we get probability x equal to n as 2.64 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 7. If n is taken as 30, we get uh, another quantity which is 2.36 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 1 fourth. That is, as we increase n, we get that uh, we get a decreasing values of probability x equal to n. And for n equal to 40, we get 7.5 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 23. That is almost 0. So, it is easy to observe that the limiting value of 0 is reached for n exceeding 30. So, we have just seen uh, how sequences are necessary in evaluating large sample performances in statistics. Uh, but uh, there are some uh, other mathematical tools uh, which are known as a series and their convergences. So, uh, in our next module, we shall discuss series, their convergences and some properties and how to check convergences of a given series in details and enumerate their applications in statistics or particularly in large sample statistics.